Driving in winter was always a battle against the elements, but on this particular January night, the snow was falling softly. It was just me, my old sedan, and the hypnotic sweep of the wipers. I'd taken this route home a hundred times before. The heater in the car barely kept the chill at bay. I remember thinking it was like driving inside a snow globe, kind of peaceful in a way. That's when the radio started to sputter. One minute it was soft classic rock, the next it was crackling static. It was then that I saw something moving on the side of the road. I slowed down. It was a guy lumbering through the drifts. He was oddly dressed for the weather, in a thin jacket, no hat. His head was bowed against the wind, and he seemed to be struggling. Against my better judgment, I pulled over. It could be dangerous to be out in the cold like this. And if he needed help, I couldn't just drive by. The cold hit me like a wall when I opened the window. Hey, you need a lift? I called out. He stopped and looked up. His face was pale, almost blue, and his eyes. They were like two dark holes in the snow. It was eerie. He didn't speak, just nodded. I unlocked the doors and he got in with a gust of freezing air. The car's interior light flickered and then died, plunging us back into darkness. Thanks, he said. It sounded like it hurt to talk. No problem. Where to? I asked, pulling back onto the road. Just ahead. Keep going. He pointed with a gloved hand that had seen better days. We drove in silence for a bit. The cold seemed to have got deeper into the car with my new passenger. I tried to make small talk, but he only gave one-word answers. Then, without warning, he said, Stop here. We were in the middle of the woods, no house in sight, just snow and darkness. I looked at him, but he was staring straight ahead, fixated on something outside the car. This is my stop, he insisted. I hesitated, but there was a firmness in his tone that made me not want to argue. I stopped the car, and he got out. Not even a thank you, before he closed the door. I watched him in the rearview mirror as he walked into the woods, disappearing quickly between the trees. I was about to pull away when the car lights flickered and briefly illuminated the woods where he had entered. For a second I could swear I saw other figures standing there just watching. My heart skipped. I blinked, and they were gone. I drove the rest of the way home without stopping, without even looking in the rearview mirror.